the kings of, Gr of Nuremberg have grown so fond of everyone singing throughout the years that every year on Midsummer Day a singing contest was held in which everyone was invited to participate. And it had become tradition that two days before the contest, the king himself would announce what that year's prize would be. And that's where our story starts. The head knight holds the horn up to his lips, and he gives it a great big blast. The palace gates swung open, and out marched all the knights. They all marched left, right, left, right, left, right. And following all these knights came the man of the hour, his majesty himself. And now all of you sitting out there on the benches, you are the citizens of Nuremberg. So when you see your king coming through your streets, you want to clap and cheer as loud as you can. receive a prize unlike any other. For this year, if you win, you will get to marry one of my beautiful princesses. Will the crowd cheer? Yay! The king said, now ladies, I see the looks on your faces. If one of you should happen to win, you will get to marry one of my most handsome knights. The knights all flex their muscles and the ladies scream. Good luck in the contest. He waved goodbye to all his subjects and began to return back to his palace, where he and his sons and daughters had a magnificent feast, began to prepare for the contest. Well, the entire kingdom was a flurry of excitement, and why no one wasted any time preparing for their contest. Why the burghers were all so excited, they ran out to the center of their village as fast as they could. And they decided decided it was time for everyone to start practicing. So this is what they sounded like. They all began to bounce back and forth and wave their food in the air while the Burgermeister was conducting everyone with her key. And so everyone was so excited they began to pop their food together and spin around in circles. Now this might not be the kind of music that we listen to today, but I promise this music was ever as popular back then as the stuff you hear on the radio is now. It came time for Clotilde's big solo. She stepped forward, she spread her arms wide, and everyone froze to listen to her sing. But as she opened her mouth, out came, um, came from the horizon a high female voice. Wow. The Burgermeister, she rushed over to Chloe, held her hand up to her mouth and said, Chloe, is that you singing so pretty? Chloe shook her voice and said, no, Mama, that's not me. Figure out who's making the sound and catch her, or she might win the contest instead of you. So the burgers rushed back to their homes as quickly as they could, and they all gathered up their favorite fishing net and stepped down to the singing meadow. And who should be singing but the gold hearted shepherdess? The birds perched on her shoulders. But the burgers snuck up from behind, they threw the net over the shepherdess, and the shepherdess screamed. I took her gently by her elbows and led her all the way back into the burg where they locked her up in the burgermeister's wine cellar. And her song grew very sad, but she wasn't the only one in the kingdom who was sad. For the king was pacing through his corridors and began to realize he might have made a terrible mistake in this year's prize. He walked out to his balcony and the king burst into tears. Great loud sobs, your majesty, let it all out. Well, his princesses came rushing over to their father to see what was the matter. And they said, Papa, Papa, why ever are you crying? Well, he said, oh, princesses, I've made a terrible mistake. I said the winner of this contest will get to m marry one of you, and I don't want to see any of you get married. Well, the princesses scratched their heads trying to come up with a solution. Then they raised their arms, jumped up and down, and said, wait, 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 Papa, what if one of us wins the contest? Then no one has to marry no one. Well, the king was so excited, he threw his arms in the air and shouted, Vundaba. But, princess, if you're going to win the contest, you're going to have to practice on practice on practice. Can you do that? The princesses smiled and nodded their heads. And so the king scooped up his robe and went skipping back to his room like a happy schoolboy. Or perhaps he just walked fast. He was very excited. He wants to get back and celebrate. Well, the princesses, they wasted no time. They went running 
Angel is singing Meadow. And when they got there, they all spread their arms wide, opened their mouths, took a great deep breath, and began to spin around in circles. <laughs> and before they could begin to actually practice, who should come running out of the forest but all the little forest animals? And they began to run a great big circle around the princesses. Well, the princesses stopped spinning and said, oh, what cute little animals, perhaps they'll let us play. And they began to chase after all those animals. And so began the world's first game of tag. But go on, princesses, you want to chase after those animals. Busy playing, the dragon was peeking out from behind the trees. You got the wrong idea. He said, Aha, I see what's going on here. Why, the king has sent his daughters out to capture my animals so they can't sing in the contest this year. Well, I'll get even with him. The dragon crouched down behind a bush and called out in his sweetest voice, You fool, princesses. Well, the princesses froze. The animals went running back into the forest. The dragon jumped out from behind the bush and the princesses screamed. Princesses, you have to imagine this is the most terrifying dragon you've ever seen in your entire life. And you want to scream so loud, the entire audience has to cover their ears. Can you do that? All right. What were your princesses? The princesses saw the dragon and they screamed. Very good job there, princesses. But it was too late. So they looked into the dragon's eyes and were instantly hypnotized. Their eyes grew wide. Their arms stuck out in front of them like they were sleepwalking. And they walked past the dragon's head and picked up his tail and began to carry it as if it was their father's robe. Well, the dragon led all the princesses into the forest, saying, Ha, 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 come on, my little princesses. I have plenty of gold and jewels for you to polish. Well, a few hours later, the king began to realize that his daughters were not coming home. He was out here in his courtyard, pacing back and forth, beginning to get rather worried. He looked up at his tower clock, over here, your majesty. He looked up at the tower clock and said, Knights, sound the alarm. The princess has not yet returned home, and I fear something terrible has happened. So the knights sounded the alarm, and as fast as they could, they went running down to the singing meadow. They all looked up high in the sky. They looked low to the ground. They looked over their right shoulder, over their left shoulder, and up to down behind them through their legs. Do you find any princesses? No. Well, they ran back over to the king and said, We're sorry, your majesty. We could not find your daughters anywhere. Well, the king began to scratch his chin, trying to figure out what could have happened. The sky knew what must have happened there nights. Why, do you see that shifty burgermeister over there in the burg? I know for a fact she wants her daughter Chloe to win. So I bet she took our princesses, so her daughter has a better chance of winning. Well, here's what I want you to do. Knights, gather around. Now, every night at 6 p.m., Chloe goes down to the meadow to practice. I want you to catch her and bring her back to me. Can you do that? And of course, the, the knights all shouted. Oh, very good job there, but you're in Germany. You want to shout, yeah. So the king went back into his palace, and the knights crept down to the singing meadow, where they found some tall grass to hide behind. They crouched down and waited for Chloe to appear. And just like the king said, at exactly 6 p.m., Chloe came skipping down to the meadow to begin practicing. When she got there, she stopped, she spread her arms wide, took a great deep breath. But before she could begin to practice, the animals were at it again. Only this time, they were running circles around Chloe. They go on there, animals. For you see, they hadn't had enough time to play the day before. But Chloe didn't think they were being cute at all. Why, she thought they were trying to distract her from practicing. And she began to chase after them, waving her fish at them, shouting, Shoo! Shoo! Go on, get out of here! Can't you see I'm trying to practice? But while Chloe was distracted, the knights all crept up closer and closer. Well, the animals, they sensed danger, and they went running back into the forest. Well, Chloe, she put her hand on her hip and said, Ha! That'll teach you to mess with me while I'm practicing. Well, the knights, they left out. They surrounded Chloe, and Chloe screamed! Very good job there, Chloe. They took her gently by her elbows and said, Young lady, you're under arrest by orders of the king. You're coming with us. And so they led Chloe all the way back to the palace. And when they got there, the king said, Oh, very good job there, knights. Now lock her up in the tallest tower, which looks a lot like the third step. The, knight, the king gave the knights all high fives, congratulating them on a the job well done. 
But a few hours passed and the Burgermeister realized her daughter had not yet come home. I was beginning to get rather worried. She went running down to the singing meadow as fast as she could to look for her. When she got there, she looked up high in the sky. She looked low to the ground. And there she saw them, Chloe's footprints. Well, she followed the footprints all the way back to the palace. When she got there, she stopped. She looked up. And what did she see waving out of the tower window? Not Chloe's hand, Chloe's fish. Chloe threw the fish down to her mother and... It got a concussion. Oh, dear. Well, the Burgermeister ran back to the center of the village. Burgers, burgers, come here. Does this look like Chloe's fish to you? Well, the beet farmer took the fish and wiggled it by her ear. We have to give it to the beet farmer there. And she said, yep, it sounds like Chloe's fish. She passed it to the carrot farmer, who sniffed it and said, oh, yeah, that smells like Chloe's fish. And she passed it to the pie lady, who licked it and said, oh, yeah, that tastes like Chloe's fish, all right? This is definitely her fish. And the burger wife said, well, do you know what this means? This means the king has kidnapped Chloe, when this means war. So the Burgermeister exchanged her key for her fighting sausage, her kill Vasa. And with that, the burgers began to pound on the palace gates, shouting, we want Chloe back. A oh, louder than that, burgers, you're not going to get anywhere if you yell quietly. Well, the king stood right out here on his balcony. He crossed his arms and did what any self-respecting mature man his age would do. He stuck his tongue out at them and said, you're not going to get Chloe back, Burgess, but here's what you are going to get. Knights, slow motion, attack! The palace gets swung open and out charged all the knights. And thus began the great battle of the Berg. But go on there, knights. You're not going to get anywhere standing still. A steel clash was carrot wide five pieces flew in the air. And that beet farmer, she was giving the knights a good beating. But the burgers were a bit outnumbered. And they began to push the burgers back and back. But then the burgers gained some strength and began to push the knights backwards. And this battle raged on all through the day, all through the night, and early into the next morning. And it could have actually been going on to this very day if it hadn't been for the burgers looking down at their food and realizing it was being chopped to bits. Why, if they didn't do something soon, they'd become burger stew. And so the burgers, they pulled their favorite trick in the book. They pointed behind the knights and said, Knights, look over there, a giant strudel. Well, the knights turned around, and what did they see? Nothing. But that was the point. While the knights were distracted, the burgers popped them all on their heads. And the knights got so dizzy, they spun around three times and fell to the ground out cold. Well, the burgers began to do their victory dance, shouting, be fun, be fun, be fun. Well, the king was not abused. He marched right over to the burgermeister. I said, Burgermeister, this will not do. Why? Oh, the one with the floppy green hat there, Your Majesty. I said, why? Do you hear those bells off in the distance? The burgers all held their hands up to their ears. And sure enough, they heard those bells ringing. The king said, that means the singing contest is only one hour away. And I will not be the first king in the history of Nuremberg to start this contest late. So we need to settle our differences. And I believe I've come up with a solution. How about we just exchange prisoners? And the burgers said, I'm all right, Your Majesty, but uh, uh, since we won the battle, you have to give us Chloe first. So the king ran over to the tower. He unlocked Clotilda. And Chloe went running down over to her mother and gave her a great big pat on the head. They were a very loving family. And the king said, now, now, enough of this mushy stuff. Where are my prisoners? Well, the, bird, the burgermeister went running back to the burg and unlocked the shepherdess from the wine cellar. Well, the shepherdess came out and when the king saw her, so young, so blonde, so beautiful, he was instantly <gasps> disappointed. He said, this is not my princesses, this is just a shepherdess. Where are my princesses? The burghers all shrugged their shoulders and said, we don't know, your majesty, we thought they were with you. But the king stomped his foot and said, well, if you don't have my princesses, then who does? And that's when it happened. The worst earthquake in the history of Nuremberg. The ground began to tremble and shake. Everyone's knees knocked together. The knights bounced up onto their feet. The animals came bouncing out of the forest. And soon, a great wave sent everyone bouncing over to this side of the kingdom. And they all looked over to the black forest. And they saw the source of this great rumbling. For out from the forest came the dragon. Well, when everyone saw this dragon, they all screamed. <laughs> for the king, of course. He wasn't afraid of no dragon. He marched right over to the dragon, popped him gently in his large nose, and said, Hey, 
dragon! I see you've got my princesses there. What is the meaning of this? Well, the dragon bowed politely to the king and said, Your Majesty, it's like this. You see, for 400 years, I have not been allowed to sing in this contest, and I happen to be one dragon who loves to sing. So, if you change that rule, I'll unhypnotize your princesses. Do we have a deal? The king said, All right, dragon, I suppose we've got a deal. So the dragon turned to the princesses and gave them all a wink, and they were instantly unhypnotized. But as you can see, they held on to the dragon's tail anyway, for they grew quite fond of him while living in the forest. Well, the king grew very upset. He said, well, then who's going to carry my robe? And the burghers all cried, we will, we will. And for the first time in the history of Nuremberg, the common folk had the honor of carrying his majesty's royal robe. And with that, the king cried, to the singing contest. And so began the grand procession. First came the king and the burghers, then the knights, then the animals and the shepherdess, and finally the dragon and all the king's daughters. Well, when the citizens saw this grand procession going through their street, they clapped and cheered as loud as they could. And finally, everyone arrived at the sixth pavilion at the traditional hour of 4 o'clock p.m. And when they got there, everyone stopped where they stood and sat down on the ground, except for the king, who gathered up his robe, took off his crown, and began to collect the name of every burger and every animal, every knight, the shepherdess, all the princesses, and yes, even the dragon. And when the king had collected the names of everyone sitting there, the singing contest began. Now some sang magnificently, some uh, quite terrible actually, and soon there were only three names left in his majesty's royal crown. The king stood right up here on his mount to the podium. He reached into his crown for the third to last piece of paper, and he read out the name, Shepherdess. The shepherdess jumped up to her feet and rushed to the center of the pavilion. She got there, she curtsied to the king. She took two steps forward over there. She curtsied to her audience. She spread her arms wide. Oh, you want to face everyone there? They'll hear you better that way. Opened her mouth, took a great deep breath, and everyone wondered, could she still sing after being lost in the wine cellar? Why, the answer was yes. Why, the shepherdess's song was so beautiful that tears began to run down everyone's faces. They dabbed away at their eyes, and soon, why, they began on each other's shoulders, so moved by the shepherdess's beautiful song. The shepherdess kept on singing, and when she reached her highest note, when everyone burst into applause. The shepherdess, she took a bow and returned to her seat by the dragon. <laughs> and they keep so very good job there, shepherdess. So now uh, let's see, what, whose name is next year? He reached into his crown for that second to last piece of paper and he read out the name Clotilda. Well, Chloe jumped to her feet and ran to the center. She curtsied to the king, curtsied to her audience. She held the fish tight to her chest, opened her mouth, took a great deep breath, and she began to sing her song. Quite a big voice for such a little lady. But the fish in her hand began to wibble and wobble as soon as it fell right over her hand and poop on the ground. Well, Chloe lost her voice. Everyone gasped. <gasps> Chloe scooped up the fish, ran over to the king, fell upon her knees and said, Oh, your majesty, please give me another chance. My fish slipped. The king said, you're what? And she said, see this fish? It slipped. Well, the king took hold of the fish. And sure enough, it wibbled and wobbled and took right out of the king's hand. The king said, oh my, that is one slippery fish there, Chloe. All right, you can have one more chance, but just one. So Chloe went back to the center. She held the fish even tighter than before, opened her mouth, took another great deep breath, and she began to sing again. She sounded even better than the last time, but the skunk remembered how horribly Chloe had treated her and her friends early in the forest. She snuck up from behind, lifted her tail high in the air, and did what skunks do best. Everyone began to point and laugh at Chloe. Chloe pinched her nose. She was so embarrassed. She ran over to her mother and said, Oh, Mama, I never want to sing again. And the skunk took a bow and everyone clapped because they thought she was quite funny. 
He says, all right, skunk, sit back down. I'm going to make a rule that you aren't allowed to sing ever again. The king reached into his crown for the last name. And he read out the name, Dragon. Well, everyone forgot that Dragon was allowed to sing that year. And when they saw him, they all thought he looked so ridiculous, they all began to point and laugh at him. But the dragon paid them no mind. He faced his jeering audience, opened his big, ugly, slimy, scaly mouth. No offense, sir. And out came this sound. Well, no one had ever heard such a beautiful voice, human or not. And soon, tears began to run down everyone's faces once again. And once again, they had to pull out their handkerchiefs and dab away at their eyes. And soon, the dragon song was too much for them. They all sobbed once again on each other's shoulders. Why, even the king was sobbing into his crown. But for a completely different reason, the king said, Oh no, if this ugly dragon wins the contest, I'll have a hideous beast for his son-in-law. How embarrassing. Well, the dragon kept on singing. His voice grew louder and louder until it reached the center of the black forest where it awoke a unicorn living there. The unicorn stopped in amazement to see it was nothing but a poor and lonely dragon. Well, the unicorn heard the wish in this dragon song, rushed down, touched him once upon his head, once upon his tail. Off came the dragon's head, off came the dragon's tail, and standing there singing away was no longer an ugly dragon, but the most handsome prince you've ever seen. job there, dragon, but I haven't announced the winner yet. Sit back down. So the dragon returned to his seat. The king took off his crown and reached in for that fateful strip of paper. Now when he read the paper, his jaw dropped in amazement. He looked at the paper, up at the audience, back at the paper, back at the audience, said, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, we have a tie. The winners this year are the shepherdess und the dragon. Well, they both looked up to their feet and went to the center of the pavilion where the king came down to greet them and shake their hands. And he said, oh, very good job there, you two. Congratulations. Now you get to pick which one of my princesses might you want to marry. A uh, dragon, we'll start with you. So the princesses all jumped up to their feet and they began to smooth out their dresses, fix their hair, and smile as pretty as they could. Well, the dragon could see that they were all very beautiful. But finally, his eyes rested on that princess he knew would be his forever. He took her by the hand and said, Your Majesty, I choose this one. The king said, A very good choice there, dragon. Now, shepherdess, you get to pick which one of my knights you want to marry. Well, the knights all jumped up to their feet, and they puffed out their chest, flexed their arms, trying to look as impressive as possible. But the shepherdess could see which knight was just right for her. She rushed over, took him by the hand, and said, Your Majesty, I choose this one. He's so tall and dreamy. <laughs> He's no very good choice of shepherdess. The king raised his arms in the air and married the two couples that very same hour. And they all lived happily ever after. But that's not the end of our story. For who jumped up to their feet, rushed over, and began to give the two happy couples high fives and pats on the back, congratulating them on their victory and their marriages. But go on, everyone. You want to celebrate with them? At the end of their celebration, when no one could high-five anymore or eat one more slice of cake, they all did something very strange. They run through their arms high into the sky and let out one last great big cheer. <laughs> and then they all did something even stranger yet, for they all turned to face their audience and took a great big bow to thunderous applause. Let's hear for all of our wonderful actors and actresses.